Greetings, mortals. It is I, Remortis, coming at you with a continuation of the Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode Solo Necromancer Challenge. This time, taking on the massive Act 3. As you can see by the length of this video, there is a lot going on in this act. I managed to condense it down to about two hours or so. I tried to keep stuff that was either unique or relevant to the Necromancer portion of the run, and omitted a lot of stuff that we do on every playthrough. But I did try to retain some of the more important fights. So before people comment down below saying I miss X, Y, and Z, rest assured, I did it. I just left it out of the video because I had to condense about 30 hours of gameplay into a watchable video. I should note that this video will contain a lot of spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3 if you haven't played it already. So be sure to watch Act 1 and 2 so at least you have an idea of what's going on with the story. Otherwise, let's just get right into it, shall we? We actually began Act 3, and I f did forget to re record the part in the Astral Prism where you were first revealed that the Emperor is, well, the Emperor. One of the first encounters we find is one of the Welcome nearby the blacksmiths, so we can get some new items. Do you think you could turn your weapon on those closest to you? However, it's actually Orin in disguise, one of the annoyances you'll have to deal with. She possesses one so, of the nether, sar nether shard the stones that we're going to need to collect to capture the brain. The bone lord's After talking to her, we go and head to the Il Mater temple, where we find that there is a murder investigation going on. You are defending a man who ritually slaughtered. The evidence speaks for itself. Feel free to look around the temple, but fair warning. The investigator won't change her mind without significant new evidence. And what better to uncover a murderer than by using a necromancer to speak with the dead. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Dwarf dressed in red. And while we we're doing some of our investigation, I got a little distracted and I talked to a, another character who is also Orin in disguise. And she talks a little more trash and I go on my way. Still rolling in the mark, I see. Remember, his throat spits lies. I make my way towards a hidden hideout and we end up getting enough experience to get our next level. Level 10, we will be a wizard level 6 and a druid level 4. And as for our feet, we're going to just take the ability improvement to increase our intelligence to 19, which will bring it up to 20, thanks to the hag hair. Something's off here, but I'm not sure what. We then make it down to said hideout and find out this is where all the deep gnomes are chilling. The boss is expecting you. We then talk to Wolbrin Bongle and, Good to well, see you. Wasn't he wants sure us to, to blow up the headquarters of where you, the Steel me, Watchers are coming every from. Every man, woman, and child in this city, and the fucking Gondians are to blame for all of it. All the more reason to get rid of them. I've built something unique: a room powder bomb, first of its kind. But by the agreeing to do so, we are presented a massive bomb, Wolverine, and please. we'll probably end up using it to destroy the this foundry. We'll see. Far. Quiet, Barkus. The adults are talking. After that little sidetrack, I go back down to the temple and this time go to where the hidden underground is. But before I go and cover the murderer, I'm going to Crypt. release this the monk spirit that's trapped in our necklace and end up having to fight some of. Uh, and then having to fight him since I didn't want to take the curse. Kind of an annoying fight. I didn't really have any of my minions out, so it wasn't too, too bad. Knock them back into the cloud of daggers here, and they're all gonna explode. <laughs> this flesh cannot contain me. No, I, no, me. Morning, Lord. I call to thee. Lend your forbearance. And now this monk spirit will be possessed in the afterlife. Oh well. 
We then come across some doppelgangers with a bunch of bodies desecrated, and we just go ahead and drop a cloud kill on them and easily hand them up since we get a nice surprise attack. And we take care of them. We then use all these fresh corpses here to go ahead and raise some of our undead. Um, but before leaving the cave, though, we do find a area of cloud kill that's there, that's just naturally occurring. And we use our skeletons to move some of the goodies out of the, the cloud kill so that we can jump safely to the area and acquire its treasure. We then go back to the temple to let her know we found the murder weapon and make our way towards That's the it. entrance to Proof Baldur's Gate. If you can convince them of Brilgor's innocence, then perhaps... It By orders of Lord Gortash, refugees are no longer allowed in the city. Turn around. Where uh -huh. we are met with a little bit of Eyes resistance as the still. Seal Watch scans us. Your party's prior and apparently knows every little detail that we did throughout our playthrough. It has heard the howls. It has seen the deep shadows of Grimfall. It knows the cold walls of Moonrise. The Watchers. Before we get into I a fight, the gnomes intervene. Need this, you pile of junk! And we run around safely. We then make our way into Shar's caress and talk to the lady up front, where she informs us that Raphael is waiting for us upstairs. As well as Raphael's assistant. So let's see what he wants. Whatever you discuss with this devil, I must hear of it. Let us speak plain. You give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. Where he goes to offer us a deal to give us the means to free Orpheus from his prison in return for signature, giving him the crown of curses should we the defeat the Elder Brain. I accept this deal and sign the contract. I'll be seeing you. And when I do, we dine. We then go inform Voss of our deal. And Tell he you rewards us with the air. lovely Gith Yankee Silver Sword. Have the hammer, and which we give to Lazel, even though we don't really use it. Then we decided to backtrack and head back towards the circus. Welcome to the circus. A motley crew of misfits and morons. And just deal with all the funny characters over there. Approach! Ugly one! I have lots of Tritos. And magics and junks I find. Call me Lucretius, ringmaster, necromancer, bringer of the night. Oh, and wine lover extraordinaire. Boring! Boring! You, my friend, are the most special person in the circus in all of Baldur's Gate. Does anyone know why? Why? You're special, my friend. Because I have a message just for you. Praise the absolute. Which results in us having to deal with some absolute agents that are hiding inside the the circus. And we end up dragging a lot of the circus members into the fight with us, including the skeletons that are near Lucretius. We talk to her about the clown, and she asks us to find her original clown, which has several body parts scattered throughout Act 3. Some of her skeleton guards died in the fight. I can safely steal from her chest back here, which gives us the pointy hat, which allows us to add our intelligence modifier to our charisma checks. We then continue on our way back towards the bridge, where we can find the room of the mother of the red dwarf who murdered Father Lorgan, which we uncover is maybe some type of ball assassination plot. Father Lorgan's name is written here too. By looking from the, uh, underneath the bed, we find the mother herself, and we speak to her corpse, which gives us a little more insight on what's going on. Murdered by my son. We then take this evidence back to that stupid elephant. I presume and they give us a pass to, to go down to the lower city. Interrupting me again? A ball plot 
You as well. Develler's been harping on about Baal for I assumed it. <sighs> Fine. Although, by making it into the lower city, the we are we promptly stopped by a steel watcher. Who then is gained control by Lord Gortash, who invites us to come up above. We meet at last. Make your way to the ceremony. And of course, <laughs> without hesitation, I ignore the orders to go up to the hall, and instead I sneak around back and go down to the jail cell. Where we found our old friend Counselor Floric in prison down there. We didn't try to break her free by sneaking through using invisibility. We managed to unlock her cell and talk her out of her whatever thing she's got going on. You might as well lock the cell. You're too late. And just as I'm about to cast invisibility on us, I realize I'm out of range, so I move forward and by doing so, the guard stalls me and uh, we have to fight our way out, which isn't too bad. But I had to pull my undead back over from the corner since I was sneaking by myself. This is far enough. The way should be clear. I will try And then we let her go free, city. and then we decide to allies, go up to fight Lord Cortash. Where we see his inauguration. Stand down, villain. In the name of the Steel Watch, aggressive action will not be tolerated in the presence of the patriarchs of this proud city. The Steel Watch. Appreciate your cooperation, citizen. Dearest Patriarchs, but a moment. I must greet a most honored guest. My friend, forgive the cold welcome. My Steel Watchers are eager watchdogs. For the good of the people, I'm sure you understand. Lord Enver Gortash at your service. I understand congratulations are in order. Thorm's defeat hasn't gone unnoticed. You're known for who you are and for that nether stone that you carry. But more importantly, you know, he offers us a chance at an allegiance. In the exchange the for thorns, defeating Orin and bringing the stones to him. Together, we can still restore authority over the brain. I'd like to propose a pact, a divine oath sworn upon spirit and flesh. I do no harm to you, nor you to me. What do you say? Shall we be allies? We abide for then it for now, just so we don't have to keep getting stopped by his people. I, Lord Enver Gortash, Whether or not we maintain it, that's up to be decided. No harm. We will rise together over Toriel. We then make our way down to the lower city, but we take a rest in the meantime. And we are greeted with Mizora, who tries to coax Will into maintaining his contract. At the behest of his father. Will Ravenguard, a choice is before you. Option one, I show you the way to your father. I guarantee him no harm except that from you and your allies. And you pledge your soul to me and the archdevil Zariel in a pact eternal. Option two, I break your pact, and you are freed from your duty. Your father dies by his enemy's hand, and Baldur's Gate loses... I convince Will to sever his pact with Mizora by damning his father. However, we might be able to rescue him down the road. Mizora, you asshole! Choose. We make a walk around camp, and uh, gear actually is visiting us since we helped him before, and he warns us that we could break out of Raphael's contract should we want to. It was foolish of you to agree to a contract. That crown you signed away is too powerful to wind up with the likes of Raphael. See you around. Maybe. We then make our way down to Lower City, God. and more importantly That's to it. the Elf Song Tavern, Proof where we'll go talk right. to Gauntlet Develop. And we tell her about the Ball assassination plot. You will be able to unearth the truth we work of this together, resurgence. and then there's more murderers for us to go investigate. Once I'm done with the Patriarchs, I'll head to Basilisk Gate. To have another go at convincing my superiors to put some resources into this matter. Meet me there if you've anything more to report. And good luck. So we make our way back to Vassal Gate. And we 
finds some a red-haired lady arguing with a guard who seems to have her mind altered. Um, the red-haired lady is trying to find her child, Nonsense. and we ask where. Can you help me? We ask details about it and offer no our family. assistance. And Vanra's father isn't around. Both St. Gannett was there, and the owner of the Blushing Mermaid. Neither lifted a finger to help me look. Thank you. We then make our way to Sorcerer's Sundries, which is going to be one of the main stores that we'll be visiting. Pretty much any rest or level up we can get, as they have plenty of lovely scrolls for us to supplement our spellcasting abilities and also conserve our spell slots. Let me back in. I'll bring Laroakin out here, you tin tube. You tell the Roakin I went for his god's damn We immediately song. are met with Arid in here, you? who's trying to argue with the guard. You went looking for the night song after me. Please tell me you found it. And Asima. Hells, if I'd known, I'd have asked for more gold. Kidnapping costs more than theft. Don't forget, I'm the one who gave we inform you him that contract. we have the night song, but we haven't been paid yet. And he would like a cut. And because he did assist us in the Act 1, I wanted to honor my deal with him, and Good I'm going to turn in said Night Song, and kid. if I can, find nice him and pay him. A black no sheep. You get that money, you come find me. Unfortunately, I or couldn't I'll find him anywhere in Act 3 you. after you do turn him in. We find Roland, and then we you. do a little bit of shopping and what make our way up here? to Lororican. We then make our way up to Lororican. The Night Song is an immortal being. The child of a deity. Oh, finally! And we promptly inform him that we have her in our possession, measure of wits and that we will come deliver her. Call. It's quite simple. Bring the night song here, and collect your reward. But before we leave our his tower, we go underneath it. We make our way underneath his. We find the entrance to the vault, vault, but more importantly, we will find the button to get us down below. Where we will find a lovely staff and a decent pair of robes. We then pass an arcana check to unlock the magics around the staff. And now it is ours. This is going to be one of the main staffs we're going to be using for the rest of the game. It grants us a variety of spells when we activate its ability. And also enhances the damage of uh, all of our other spells when we use that active ability. The robes we wear very, very briefly. Um, we get these replaced fairly quickly. They're just an okay pair of robes, like I mentioned. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different, a bunch of different elemental types. Most of the time, we'll be using the bolts of doom as it will enhance our spells with lightning damage, and more importantly, it gives us access to chain lightning, which is going to be very useful for taking out steel watchers should we have to fight them. As well as a few other people. We then make our way back to the vaults and begin stealing things down here and getting a lot of really high level spells, which we then scribe when we're able to. Pages. We then make our way into further into the vaults where we will unlock the Tharkiat Codex, which will allow us to read our, further read our Necromancy of Fae book so that we can acquire the last portion of the book. The book radiates power, but the words you read in the Codex echo in your mind. Guiding your eyes safely across the page. The once indecipherable glyphs now feel dangerously familiar. Promising unholy power to those who can take it. Past the strange glyphs, you can feel the book resisting. Ghostly voices whisper at you from the dark, probing and fighting your mind. But your will is iron, and you brush past these shades of the past, 
devouring every secret the book has to offer. You see now life and death are malleable as clay, to be bent and reshaped by your will, by your power. But as you close the book, a nagging doubt whispers in your mind. What consequences will there be for calling the dead from their rest? And now that we have successfully read the book, we have the ability called Dance Macabre, which will allow us to summon five ghouls. Now these ghouls have a mind of their own, as in the AI controls them. Um, they're not the smartest, but they're pretty nice just to have extra bodies, and each of their attacks can potentially paralyze. There is something you gotta wor be worried about though with these guys, is once they die, they will explode with necro necrotic damage in an AoE. And if they're all next to each other, they'll, they could potentially chain explode, so be careful with them. We then go to the other side of the vault and get the Annals of Karsis, which is something for Gale, but we're not really using him in this playthrough, so we don't really mention it to him. We then go to one of the beachfronts in the lower city to test out our new toys. We use chain lightning on these guys, which instantly murders them because they're all they're all suffering the wet condition since they just came out of the water which will double our lightning damage and then we let the ghouls loose and we then shoot a lightning bolt killing the other ones and let the ghouls do their magic yeah this is gonna be fun We then make our way towards you Mystic Carrion, who is very important for Necromancers, yes, as he has some really good items for sale, Mystic Carrion. but also for the staff that he carries. I sense you too like to wonder the boundaries between life and death. You have read the Necromancy of Fae. Tell me. So before we continue what our conversation, we go ahead and purchase our items. Into the presence of uh, we'll be getting the Hood of the Weave, which will enhance our spell DC. But more importantly, we'll be getting the Armor of the Spore Keeper, which is essential for Spore Druids. Whenever we have our Symbiotic Entity active, we get access to a few different types of spores that we can use as either actions or bonus actions. And more importantly, it will be giving us haste spores. So every long rest, we'll be able to throw a, a kind of like a spore grenade from Act 1. Uh, there's a little area of spores, and anybody that stands in it gets haste. So this is perfect for unleashing our undead army by throwing the spore cloud right in front of where they should be running. Giving potentially you, as well as all of your minions, haste to give them extra actions. He then gives us a task to go acquire Thrumbo, and we'll eventually get to that. Uh, we then go to back to Rivington. In the meantime, we talk. We go in camp and let her know that Lorikin's looking for her, and we send her on her way. We'll meet up with her in a little bit. Let us not dwell on those dark days. We then make our way to where a group of thieves are fighting, and unleash our undead horrors on them. You help me kill these asses. And we decided to take on both sides, because fuck them, that's why. As you see, we're going to place down our Spore Cloud here, so that anybody who enters it gets haste. We drop a Cloud Kill off in the distance, and then finish them off with a Chain Lightning over there. And then we unleash our minions. We then go back to Lower City and start looking for Thrombo, talking to some of his people, as well as finding one of the clown's body parts over here by the Basilisk Gate. We then get a few information on where Thrombo might be. But I haven't heard from him since. He must be somewhere near the water. And we'll investigate that in a moment. Let's hope he didn't drown. 
come on, mate. Who would want me dead? Oh, shit. We then make our way towards the pirate You're tavern serious? and speak to Captain Grizzly about the girl. Captain Grizzly at your service. Oh, not this claptrap again. Listen, Laura was here, all right? Knocking back pints like there's no tomorrow. But she was alone. I run a bar. What use would I have with some little one running around? Cry. Look, next time she pulls a knife on me and mine, someone might die. Something has to be done. I hate that it's. She then offers this, us a job to go I'll kill Laura for 3k. And that's a lot of money, so I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Maybe I'll do it. Good. Return when the deed is done. Unless you have news of my daughter. What? Oh. Which we promptly destroy her and return. You actually did it. <laughs> oh, Petal, I've missed you. Worked out, you know. I was going to cut your pretty little head off and then kill Laura myself. But then you bashed the wretch's head in. So now, not only am I a fumble, but I owe you, of all people. Thanks. Still a little shit, I see. Thank you. You. And as you can see, the captain is actually anti-ethical, and because we did this so task for her, we actually get her as an ally in the, the end game battle. Walk away, Petal, and when the time comes and your back is up against the wall, you'll have the guts and glory of a hag at your side. You'll have me. And then we get our money I and we are you on our way. Than you looked. Here, the gold, as promised. Plus, a little extra for my favorite mommy killer. Bye bye, Petal. And then we go and visit one of our favorite alchemists. Look what the cat dragged in. Haven't seen you since you cleared up me old noggin in the Underdark. How you been? No time to waste dragging my feet. But I make up for the time I wasted while my brains were inside out. We then ask where his wife went. Fled in the night, and haven't seen her ugly face since. For the best, only the finest. And to thank And then we go ahead and head, peruse his goodies. This top. is going to be a good source Just of you. finding uh, giant elixirs and storm cloud elixirs. You color rats, yes. I heard then we decide to go and warn worry. some more folks on the Chef assassin list. We then rent a room in the Elfsong Tavern and decide to rest. Where we are met with Queen Vlacketh. Who then... Queen Vlacketh. Who then asks Blazel to Scrum. stop being a little punk Boy, and go Sean. kill Orpheus for her. And still you speak my name. Return to the Astral Prism. Slay Orpheus the Pretender. Serve me, and I will ascend you. You will be no mere warrior, nor Kithrak. You will be Barta Vlakith, commander of dragons. My only, my chosen. A final chance. Kneel before me. Make your promise. Lazar's thoughts become yours. The sight of Orpheus looms over her mind. In exchange for killing Orpheus, Blacketh promises to make Lazel a Chosen. She Although at this point in the game, Lazel is anti Blacketh after discovering all the truths. And for funsies, I decided to try to roll for this persuasion check to see if I could convince her otherwise. I was completely anticipating it to fail, but apparently I got a nat 20 here. So uh, I guess uh, hail Blacketh, right? I'm, I pause here for a moment because I'm baffled that I actually succeeded it. Bart of Vlakith. 
No Gith Yankees hurled the honor. My faith almost lost to the dark winds. How incredible for them to carry it back. Chmarzalav, Lakith. Your grace is my honor. Orpheus will die by my hand, and I will take my rightful place at your side. One promise. One drop in the astral sea. Do not fail me. For you would not survive the flood to follow. And after helping our Githyanki girlfriend, it looks like our devil own. friend over here wants a piece Smile. of this action. And I'll come to you when you put your head down to rest. Tonight, then. Be ready. We then make our way to the docks in the lower city and aid one of our imprisoned friends over here. We use invisibility to get past them without initiating the conversation and just immediately release Volo. We drop a cloud kill on our enemies, as well as setting up some haste spores right on top of our ghouls so that they can just go ahead and rush over there. And then I step in the spores myself to go ahead and get a little bit of extra movement. I use Firebolt on that bear over there, but I probably should use a Fireball. Oh well. And then we unleash the ghouls. Unfortunately, some of them get destroyed by that guy, but they, and they cause a chain reaction exploding on them, just dealing a little bit of, even more damage on top of them. We move the cloud kill in a favorable position, we level up, but we need to end the, the battle. And there we are. Now we are level 11. We can access level 6 spells thanks to our spell casting, combined spell casting. And then we go ahead and just go to level 5 druid. This will give us access to level 2 druid spells and we can scribe level 6 spells. Now that we are level 11, we could decide to go to Lorican and turn in Dame Aelin. Unbeknownst of her. What have we here? A magician in a tower, hiding away from the frightening world. Oh, my apologies, Dame Aelin. I meant no disrespect. I asked our mutual friend here to make an introduction that I might get to meet the famed daughter of Saluna. Forgive me for that impudence. Perhaps our friend can bridge the gap and do what I believe they came here to do? And, well, we are here to turn her in. So we tell her it's better for her to go quietly. Dame Aelin does not go anywhere quietly. Ain't that the truth? Be reasonable, madam. You can't outmatch two powerful wizards. Now I'm curious if he's there referring to me or if he's just I referring to himself. Do. And funny enough, apparently uh, in one of the honor mode updates, um, they actually made this an honor mode encounter. And uh, she summons three angels to assist her. Where were these angels when I was fighting Catholic Thorm? They would have been really nice there. Even more of a reason, I guess, to turn her in. However, <laughs> he will summon some of his uh, elementals oh, and the Aelin. fight ensues. I look forward to getting to know you for the next eternity. Myrmidons! Imperatum! All right, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and cast our uh, haste spores on the ground. And, before, and we also throw some grease bottles on the floor. And then before doing anything else, I go ahead and check out their statistics. 
Uh, they do a ton of damage. Um, they will be granting Brand of the Silverlight on all allies, as well as has an, a crazy, crazy reaction attack should they be hit. Sorry, should they be attacked. Um, they also like to spam that Lunar Shield on her, which is just a global vulnerability. So the trick to fighting these angels is from getting inside that globe of mineral vulnerability and attacking them from one while you're doing it so that we don't take that nasty reaction damage. You can see over here they start uh, just murder by one of my uh, ghouls here and do a little bit of AOE damage on everyone. And uh, you can get a little taste of how much damage this saloon's ire does. Look at that, 74 damage. That's just insane. Um, Roland's magic missile is actually really detrimental to this fight because uh, it applies daze, which will prevent reaction attacks. So that's another thing to um, note as well. On our turn, we run uh, into the haste spores and then run into the global vulnerability. We then drop a poison cloud right on top of us and one of the angels. Meanwhile, the elementals over there decide to uh, attack the angels and get some of the reactions out of the way, eating them up for us. And I believe these angels are actually uh, able to be paralyzed. Unfortunately, we don't get lucky here. And we just lose another ghoul. We then try to attack one of the angels with our fire elemental. Of course, we miss because they have really high AC. We then jump back over to the haste spores to get another movement. To get another action. And the lightning elemental actually manages to get a stun on one of the angels, which is pretty nice. I see then see Roland just dash over there. I'm wondering what the hell he's doing, and I just see him knock the angel down, and I just it didn't even occur to me that you could actually do that. So uh, shout out to Roland for being the MVP here. Aelin tries to use her lunar flare and. We then get back, go back into the haste spores and then jump back into the club of vulnerability and then we launch our cloud kill on top of the angel. The angel kills uh, another ghoul and takes more damage. We then have our fire mental teleport down below and try to finish off this angel down here, which we do. And we counter another lunar flare. We then get back inside Bubble and unload some magic missiles on top of the other angel. And then we just heal up with the potion. And set hit him with another batch of magic missiles. Then the other angel is down there is, is stuck and we take advantage of that. And one more counter. And then reposition myself to drop a cloud kill on top of the last angel. And she dies. Leaving just Dame Aelin by herself. At which point the fight becomes pretty easy. And we end. Do not tell Isabel what fate has befallen Dame Aelin. She must not. You stood to gain from my undoing. I know your reasons fetid though they are. But Isabel. Isabel deserves to live. Please. Do not harm a hair on her blessed head. 
May the Moon Maiden have mercy on your soul. Thanks. We then go to one of the nearby houses and find one of the assassination murders. The corpse regards you lifeless. Alexander! As well as going below to find one of the Dribble's corpses. And then this is part where we cut out a lot of content and I talk to the Thieves Guild and break into the bank and encounter Minsk with Jahira in tow. Although we don't really utilize her too much. And you can hear my audio kind of gets shoddy, so uh, sorry for that. Uh, we go ahead and fight off all these ball cultists, but let Roa run free with the money. So close and then to we get Minsk on our problem, side and make our way back to, uh, to rest. Same. <laughs> where we find we'll Halson going crazy, but turns out it's just Orin, and she kidnapped blade. him. Where she also offers a truce, should we go for Gortash, we can go into her place without being jumped by her assassins. This only works on some of the assassin ambushes, though. And while we're here, we actually talk to Valo now that we rescued him as well, and coincidentally enough, he gives us a book, which once we read it, will give us a buff to fighting against Orin's slayer form. I wish you luck, my friend. And I hope that when I see you again, you'll be in one piece. Two or three at most. We then go to sleep where we are back inside the sphere with the Emperor. They say that home is where a person can be their truest selves. Do you insist and I'm not having any of this shit. You are my puppet. Make no mistake, without me you have no value. We are done here. We then make our way back to the Thieves Guild, where we meet up with Roa, and we help them take over the Thieves Guild. Oh, let's! To arms, Centurim! The Guild is ours for the taking! It's a pretty easy fight, but we help turn the tides in our favor. As you're noticing a trend here, we drop haste spores and then followed by a cloud kill. On all the little dudes on the bottom. And then we just let our minions help take quick work and we throw out a few spells here and there to help speed things along. And we also hit level 12 after this fight, which will bring us to 6 levels of wizard and 6 levels of druid. Which will allow us to finally get the full portion of the build and letting us summon fungal zombies. My new office. The chair could be a little comfier and the desk. And now we have the Zentarum as our allies in the do. last battle. When it comes time to fight the Absolute, you'll have a private army at your- We then make our way down below to the underground prison because I wanted to free the gnomes and potentially stage a breakout. Gortash warns us about breaching our allegiance here and I don't when give a crap so we end up parting ways. And now begins the breakout. All right, so we are now have, we now only have five turns to rescue all the prisoners and make it back up here. So, we go ahead and drop our Spork Cloud and immediately dispatch some of our flying ghouls. I'm trying to see which ones are up in the front just to help move the pathing along. And we use our hasted ghoul to f fly as far as you can and then dash as their action. We're going to use a jump as well, just to make sure we get as much distance as possible, and then use the remaining of our movement to fly over to this initial Sahagan. We'll attack. Fortunately, we didn't paralyze, so we just go ahead and, and reposition ourselves just to be in their way. Nothing will stop. And we do the same thing with the next, the next flying ghoul. 
And this one we do actually get a paralyzed on, so that's pretty sweet. And then we run this one over to the non-paralyzed hunter. With our subs, we're going to go to the south and use our flight to maximize our travel distance. We're going to dash and use our help action to help this lady out, which will consume our action. And then we will fly over to the lever, and apparently levers don't require actions here, so this is pretty sweet. And then uh, we use the remaining, remaining of our movement to fly back here after freeing that gentleman. And then with our other flying ghoul, we bring them as all the way over to the west as well, and we start opening the levers. And then we'll, we'll position them as well right next to the remaining unparalyzed hunter. And our macabre ghouls will go down there and just beat on this Sahagan right there. Sahagan Hunter, under pressure from all of these ghouls, will be at disadvantage on the range attacks and uh, do a little bit of damage there, but they missed that. We then have us go down and finish off that Sahagan where the ghouls are. And then we had, have us head to the east. And with our last flying ghoul, we go to the west and open the remaining prison cell. And Shovel will go ahead and open the one of the prisons down below. And then our fungal zombies will go and fight the chieftain and make their way towards the other saga further to the west. To the east, I mean. At the beginning of our next turn, we're going to go ahead and dash to double our movement. And before we fly, we're actually going to pop a speed potion just to give us the hasted effect. And then we fly over here to the west. Open this lever. And we're going to be using our flying just to maximize our movement speed. This chest, fly over here. We're going to grab the specimen and then also loot the backpack and finally use our action and free a meluum this is gonna be very vital for saving everybody our flying ghouls go ahead and destroy the one of the hunters and pretty much kill the second and then shovel opens the remaining door climbs up back up to get more haste spores and comes back down and scares the chieftain. Oh, champion, sorry. Yeah, same thing. On a Meluim's turn, we're gonna use our ability, which will teleport us back to the submersible and have him go back down into the haste spores, giving another turn and a little bit more move speed. And we'll use him to head to the east as well. Fortunately, he can't fly all the way here like our player can, but uh, we use him to go ahead and move over and open the remaining two prison doors. As you can hear that weird cackle, we're going to be greeted by Mizora once we get the Duke further away. And then she appears and gives us a little bit of taunt since, you know, we essentially condemned her due to her contract. But we're gonna thwart her well, plans. Look who it is. I was hoping you'd bound. She summoned these weird exploding spider things that uh, don't really do too much here. Unless we managed to get him away further enough. So at the beginning of our next turn, um, before we move our character, uh, we decided we want to make sure we killed that last guy because once we go down here, we'll bring out all of our minions. And then we use all of our forces to head to the east to help bring the Duke back alive. And I killed the remaining champion. And I killed the champion with some of my spells. I decided to crit. So fuck it, why not? And then we move over here to help one of the prisoners get closer and give him a little push. Yeah. 
And with one of our remaining flying ghouls, we go ahead to the south and seal off one of the gates and rushing through before it closes. This pretty much seals the, the rest of the fight. We then bring a Mellowum over here to teleport the Duke up to the Submersible. And then we just wait for everyone to get back up. Easy day. And all we gotta do is wait for us to come back up. And we wait and end our turn. And there we are. Everyone made it safely. Indeed I did. And then after that we go ahead and go back to Thrumbo. What are you doing in here? And talk to him. Beneath Carrion Salon. Is it Shields doesn't know about some weird chamber no, beneath the mansion. There, so which we find in the undercity him. sewers. But be careful if you return to Carrion. We deal with You'll his mummies, which is actually a close fight, as you can see this is what's remaining of us. Um, they do this nasty curse on you whenever you cast spells, you pretty much blow up, so uh, that's kind of what hurt me here. But we did manage to prevail. What? We then get the Canopic Jars as well, the notes that reveals that um, Carrion's heart is actually inside of Thrombo, so he goes and takes it out of him, and we go and destroy the rest of them. I didn't realize they explode when you destroy them, so uh, yeah, make sure I heal in between these now. Almost died there. All right, then we go to sleep before we go ahead and fight you Mr. Carrion, where we finally get to get jiggy with spark, our demon friend. By a heat. And uh, our I hot kinky girlfriend was not too keen on that. Decline, only allies. And then uh, my audio here is really goofed up, so hopefully you don't mind that. Uh, we go to fight Mr. Carrion and just throw him a bunch of fireballs at his way since he's vulnerable to that. Um, this fight is actually pretty annoying for necromancers because anytime you're undead attack, uh, he just gets control of that undead. Doesn't get control of all of them, just whatever the last one is that attacked. So it's kind of an annoying fight. Not too bad, though. Uh, if we had a really good concentration spell like a wall of fire, that probably would have been really good here. But we have a couple fireballs. We lose shit and continue the fight. And we kill him. We then investigate more murders and look for the rest of the dribble corpses. A step forward. A corpse is huge. And is that a burning heart? And then this is actually a notable location just southwest of the Sorcerer's Sundry teleporter. Um, this room down here is really good for necromancers. So there's a lot of fresh bodies that don't disappear when you take a long rest. Uh, make sure to note it as you can see here. Oh, sorry, it's not yeah, southwest directly of the lower city central wall. I just label this as bodies. So whenever I run out of bodies, I come back here. And to find one of the remaining thrombo corpses, we go ahead and hit these little dudes up there, which opens the door. We sneak on by with invisibility. And uh, something odd there, though, is uh, I don't think you actually need to do the whole ball murder mystery thing with Saravok and all that, um, should you go through that entrance. I'll have to try that next time in my playthrough, but uh, I, all I came to do here is I just came to get Thrumbo's corpse and I, I bounce. And then we get out of here. We go ahead and turn in Dribbles. Hello again, my vicious little warrior. Any luck finding Dribbles? Oh, perfection. This is just what I need. His flesh has a few rat bites and his teeth 
are missing, but these are minor issues. I shall remake Dribbles better than before, where once he was famous, he will now become legend. And you? Here, darling, a little something from your friend, Lucretius. My and we are granted the Spellmite Gloves, uh, which leave. can be somewhat useful here. Um, this will enhance our damage on attack uh, spells that use attack rolls, and, but anyways. Uh, we then make our way to the Seal Foundry. I leave my minions at the front just so I can sneak around because I'm trying to look for the head gnome guy. Um, but I make my way down here and I realize I goofed up because uh, he's actually in the first room. And by coming here, I started the whole fight without them and uh, I had to fight both rooms at once and well, it goes so-so. And then unfortunately, all that hard work of freeing the gnomes and I get them all killed like you see right there. That explosion was uh, them expo making all the gnomes explode their necklaces. So I just go ahead and kill the main guy. I take his key. And then I fly towards the final gate. And I have to wait my turn. And then next turn we fly down, use the key to open the door, and we're inside the main antechamber. We heal up and then go use invisibility to get to the main console, and we say, fuck it, we're just going to destroy it with the giant bomb. I actually was going to try to free all the gnomes, just to ha do it for once, but I've never been able to do it, because I always forget about that secret explosion. So, oh well. Maybe next time. The center. Walburn. Take the city. Let the iron. And originally, I actually was planning on siding with Wolbrin because I'm trying to do all the cursed uh, actions in this run. But, uh. Honestly, I can't do Barkus like that, so uh, I ended up siding with Barkus. I still want to believe you're better than that, Wolbrin. I say, I say you're right. This is ridiculous. Iron hands, kill this man. When we next meet, my hammer will cleave your skull. And before he leaves, I decide to throw a firebolt at this asshole. And then start a fight with him and finish him off with a level 6 blight, thanks to our new staff from the Necromancer. And then afterwards, uh, I decided to go help Asarian ascend, and not too much. I didn't want to show too much of it, I just going to showcase the fight. It's pretty easy, all you gotta do is just throw down Daylight, you counter his first spell, um, I drop my Haste Spores, and then we drop a Cloud Kill on top of them. After using the um, that frozen orb spell, level 6 spell, I forget what name of that, it's just a scroll. I mostly wanted to get it down just to get the, the floor all nice and slippery. And then we go ahead and just take on the rest of his minions. It's a pretty simple fight after you use daylight on him. And once you kill him, he'll disappear into the coffin. Then you just gotta kill the rest of his minions. And then the Sarian pulls him out of his sleep. No, no, no healing sleep for you. Wake up! Get your hands off me, worm! <laughs> Don't! Ah! Isarion then goes ahead and carves the ritual on the back of Kazador's back oh, and oh, presumes the ritual. Oh. Eke Dominus has animus! Of Arrow 
in sacrificio! That ache in my stomach, that hunger, it's gone. I'm free. I'm finally free! Oh! Oh, it feels delicious! Yeah, yeah. Back to Camp Go. We then make our way to visit our old friend Gortash. We do a little bit of cheese with the Barrelmancy here. Um, but we initiate the fight by throwing the Karabasin's Gift, which is what you can get from that uh, red dwarf that's murdering everyone. So we go ahead and use our spores here to give us haste. And we want to take out that little thing on the back, which is giving him resistances. So we're going to use a lightning arrow here to take it down. And we break it. Although it didn't do quite the full effect of what we want to do, so we go ahead and ignite everything with the wall of fire here which will explode the barrels and getting rid of the other thing which will give him vulnerability instead of getting resistances and he's still paralyzed let's go ahead and then reposition ourselves into the main room where we have our four of our flying ghouls in each corner of that room because once you see here Gortash is going to go super saiyan and summon these weird ball ghost apparition things We have this giant hand above us. We go ahead and try to smack him with one of our ghouls to see if we get lucky, and we did. And he's paralyzed again. So we go ahead and just drop another cloud kill right on top of him. And have our ghouls take care of the little minions and move in position towards Gartash. We then go ahead and use a scroll of ice storm to make the ground over there slippery so that way the enemies can't really get to us very well. And we throw down a another cloud kill. Uh, but not before I decide to step in it for some reason. Gotta love the pathing sometimes. And then we move back. However, I notice that uh, they shoot at one of those stupid bombs, so I switch back and I try to unend my turn and then I just move position just so I don't get hit by that bomb. We then have each of our remaining ghouls kill what their corresponding corners and move in on Gortash. This one, however, we're going to just go ahead and attack Gortash and get a nice beefy 28 crit since he's paralyzed. We have us take care of that ghoul's corner so he can come get a nice free shot on Gortash with a nice 24. And this ghoul will just move into position next to that apparition so that way it targets it instead. Gortash is unparalyzed, so next turn he'll be able to move, so we gotta make sure we take care of him now. And to no one's surprise, I drop another cloud kill right on top of him. This time without hurting myself by my own cloud kill. And then we use a scroll of chain lightning to kill some of the minions and do some more damage on him. Um, and then we'll try to fly away and teleport towards our ghouls that we have off in the standby. The reason I wanted to keep them back here is uh, you'll s their AI is really dumb and they attack the nearest thing possible and unfortunately, as you'll see in a moment, um, the brilliance of their stupidity. But not before we use us to deal the final blow to Gortash. Um, on our next turn, we go ahead and cast a global vulnerability because that giant fist over there is going to destroy us. And then you can see the brilliance of the ghouls, where they decided to attack the explodey thing and then get them all killed. So, yeah, that was kind of pointless. 
We then come up and resummon our Dance Macabre just because I want to have them have to get the final blows on this last guy. And then we just move back. Uh, us is putting work in over here today. I don't know why that one decided just to dash instead of dealing with the ghouls, but whatever. I let the, the zombies pass his turn. Never a dull moment. I pass my turn as well, but not before going around the corner. And then just letting the ghouls do some work. Only one of them managed to hit though, unfortunately. But that's okay. And then we finish them off and we get the netherite stone from Gortash. your senses. Above the hell rises a screech, gleeful and maniacal. We must stop it before it breaks free. After that, we take control of the brain. And you, we shall see. We finish looting Gortash and we make our way towards Orin. We deal with the initial trial by obliterating this guy with some magic missiles. Getting rid of that unstoppable buff that they have. And then I use a scroll of disintegrate. Nearly one-shotting him. We missed by two HP, unfortunately. We try to come up down to finish him with the halo spores, but unfortunately it resists. We then end a turn right next to him. It tries to cast slow, which we just use Psionic Backlash to just deal a little bit of damage and finishing him off. And then we just gotta survive the, these two guys' attacks, and then we're free to go. But we're not trying to deal with any of her bullshit here, so we just go ahead and just knock her off the ledge. Because fuck her. And there we go. We then loot her key, as well as her dagger that holds the netherite stone. And we free Halson. And we use Halson and turn into an elemental and make sure short work of these guys. This place reeks of evil. It must be purged. And there we are, the last netherite stone. And we make our way out. From and head towards the elder brain themselves. You are here. Now you will witness the grand design. And of course, we make a feeble attempt at trying to beat this 99. Uh, we rolled a 2. So, not quite a uh, nat 20, but that's alright. the Emperor pulls us into this the Astral Prism. Is not over. Where I begin to resummon my army, using some of the corpses here, ignoring the Emperor. The 
and immediately ignoring him and breaking open Orpheus's prison. The Emperor has a little hissy fit and goes and enjoys the absolute for who knows what reason. Honestly, this kind of writing is a little bit poor, but you know, it is what it is. Literally an enemy the whole game and oh no, you're against me, so now I'm gonna join the enemy. What? Oh, that makes no sense. Anyways, we free Orpheus, who talks some shit, but realizes we're we allies in the allies. end. Make no mistake. Were it not for our common goal, I would strangle you where you stand. The hardest metal in the world would not cut through its mind, for it is made of thought itself. At this point, it will take an elithid to unleash the full potential of the nether stones. So where he talks Just shit about us free. being an illithid, he figures, oh, well, okay, I'll become one too. Why not? I will become illithid. I will sacrifice my soul for my people. I will end the grand design. All right, so then we go and reunite with our allies. Your late friend? Yeah, whoever this you are, dude. This is the one you spoke of. The very same. The champion we've been waiting for. The one who will save Baldur's Gate from ruin. The Fist examines your illithid ally with suspicion. He was not expecting the savior of Baldur's Gate to be accompanied by a mind flare. Appearances may change, but they do not mask the one within. This one, I know. Observe with whom it traveleth, friends. This mind Which is kind of funny to me, because like all these guys are cool with some undead dude just chatting with them. And uh, my lives. The fist eyes your lithid ally. Granted, Withers is a G, but you know. Softening to curiosity, his hostility melting at the recognition that there's more. Anyhow, here are all the allies we made in this run. My steel is yours, and I'm not alone. I'm better at crafting steel than wielding it. Your friend here is armored and potion fueled and ready for battle. I have marshaled the best the flaming fist has to offer. We will fight to the last. You've unexpected friends. <laughs> but my debt to you still stands. The Iron Hand Gnome's firepower is yours to command. Just show us where it's needed. Whatever strength I have to lend, I will lend it. I will make my city proud again. Ramazif's arcane artillery is more than ready to demolish your enemies and mine. Give the word, and you will not be disappointed. You've bought yourself some Zentish steel. Use it well. Not sure what I have to offer a mind flare, if I'm honest. But I hope my words of encouragement and reassurance will strengthen your uh, resolve. Congratulations, Pekin. You've got a hag on your side. And if that doesn't save your ass, nothing can. My dark forces are at your command today. We have a common goal. All the strength of the lands we healed flows through me. And from me to you. And whatever company you keep. Nature's servant awaits. Glad to have you with us. And not a moment too soon. The air is thick with anticipation. All eyes are on you. So we just saw a little, go, little speech here. Go team, and uh, we're on to the next scene. First steps the hardest. And instead of fighting the battle to come, we just go ahead and go invisible. I don't know why I didn't decide to just multicast the invisibility, but we make our way to the top and make our final preparation. One thing to note, um, as you're playing a solo spellcaster on the Elder Brain, um, the final portion re requires you to alternate your spell types. As uh, every at the end of every turn, the brain will become immune to whatever the previous damage it took the last turn. So we go ahead and resummon our army here. This makes it a nice and fresh. 
And then we go ahead and check our spell book. So we make sure to diverse ourselves up here. Uh, we go ahead and get our... Uh, we replace Cloud Kill since the brain this can't really be hit by the poison from where it's positioned. And we also get rid of our elemental, but we still retain the elemental we have because we use a scroll to summon that one. Uh, we just verify what scrolls we have. We have a chain lightning, we have scroll of vulnerability, we have some cold spells. So we go ahead and get dethrone as well as blight. We have those two. And then for our level six spell, we're gonna take disintegrate. Alright, and now we are ready to go up above. So we're first going to go ahead and drop a spore cloud to give us a little haste. We go ahead and um, move our guys up to go attack the Emperor and we get him paralyzed. We then have our good old pal Orpheus over here. We're going to have him go up front and summon the Displacer Beast up above to help distract the mine players up there. And we position him right here. Uh, with Arc Turn, we're going to fly in the same direction. Right next to Orpheus. And for our two actions, we're just going to summon allies. We're first going to summon Astarian's Undead. Since they're really, um, the more here for distractions rather than actual combatants. Um, we send the Harpers up here, but they're kind of useless throughout the most of the fight. And then our little ghouls over there go ahead and distract and start attacking tentacles. Um, we have our flying ghouls, however. Uh, we're going to make them a little bit more useful and have them come up and attack the mind flares at the top. Hopefully landing paralyzing strikes on them so that way they can't do anything to us when we go at, um, attack the end boss. And we do manage to get two lucky paralyzes on the, the right two mind flayers. And we just try to, you know, swarm them real quick. Displacer Beast manages to destroy the mind flayer up there. For some reason, the Shades are picking a fight with the Red Dragon, and, uh, well, they get blowed up. Um, funny thing, though, is uh, these tentacles are actually vulnerable to the, uh, the zombie curse, and uh, will become zombies should you hit them with the zombies, and then also, you know, uh, kill them while they have that disease on them. So all these little tentacles are going to turn into to spore zombies. It's just kind of funny. Now the red dragon's turn, and it goes and launches a fireball on all the undead minions there. Some of them survive, and they are doing their job. On our turn, we go ahead and cast a Dimension Door Scroll up towards the end area. Um, since those two were paralyzed and, and or dead, um, they did not counterspell it. And we have Orpheus begin the channeling to get to the last part of the match. With our Fire Elemental, we just have him go back over to the hay spores. Try to make sure if I have enough movement to get over there. And we do. So then we can teleport back and bitch slap the Emperor with some hot-handed slaps. And then that'll be its turn. With our flying ghouls, we're going to try to do our best to see if we can't paralyze that last mind flare on the left side. Um, they both die in their attempt to do so since he has that fire shield active and they don't really have much health left from attacking the other ones. That one does pop a shield and that's unfortunate. The remaining of Asturian's undead forces start uh, dealing damage to the Dream Guardian as well as the Emperor. And then my little zombie there tries to distract the, the dragon. And then right here I'm actually kind of a little worried because I thought the uh, mind flayers are coming over to um, interrupt us. But they're wasting their turns trying to mind control stuff, so uh, yeah, cool. I'll let them do that, why not? And then the dragon just uh, is distracted by more of our undead. And we make it in. This is our 
chance. Cannot, will not submit. Even bound it. This is it. All right, so we need to make sure we coordinate our element types and also make sure we're safe before we start attacking. We position both Orpheus and our character right in the center, and we have Orpheus put down a mine sanctuary, which will allow us to essentially get a few extra attacks in by leaving a two of bonus action to cast an action spell. Uh, we do not get to land here, so we go ahead and just drop a level six moon uh, moonbeam right after we did the chain lightning, um, and then we so throughout this fight the brain is going to be making these orbs of negation appear, which will try to blow up all of these little platforms. So we have limited time before we, there's no platforms left, and then we die. On our next turn, we go ahead and just initiate the turn with a dethrone. We get hit by the little mind blast there. And then we were, we were going to follow up with a level 6 blight, but uh, apparently we're too far, so we had to reposition, and as we stepped out, we lost the ability to cast it. And we also use the rest of our movement. So we then uh, go ahead and just uh, fix our mistake by just uh, using Misty Step to get to safety. And unfortunately, ending our turn. With Orpheus, however, we're going to have him fly down and smack the brain in melee for two times, doing a decent amount of damage. Our next turn, we fly up to the top and we go ahead and use our special magic missile, the Art of War thing. Uh, we use a potion of speed since we uh, did not get hit by the uh, lethargy there. But then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I still have my level 6 spell of disintegrate. So we go ahead and just cast that. Although we're a little too far, so we go ahead and try to get a little closer. By flying into position to that platform right next to it. There we are. And on Orpheus' turn, we're going to have him fly right next to us. And we're going to cast Black Hole, which also does force damage. We should get to a spot and make sure that actually hits it. There we are. Alright, and then we reposition both of our guys because we're right next to the, the Orb of Negation. Uh, we go ahead and cast our Cone of Cold here, doing a little bit of frost damage. Get by the Mind Blast. And then I just hit him with another Moonbeam. Orpheus got Mind Broken, so can't really do it much. So I'm just gonna try to melee attack. Did a decent amount of damage. There's only a little bit of HP left. We then fly up here to safety, sending both Orpheus and us up here, since it's the last remaining safe platform. Time to push my luck again. Just in case. Uh, I'm trying to see if we can't hit him with, the, with that. Uh, it's out of reach, unfortunately, so we just use the Chain Lightning Scroll and finish the job. And there we are. We then tell Orpheus to finish the job, and he does so. My master. Hopes, nightmares, and the screams of legions upon legions of unborn elipids. The pain rips through you, obliterating all thought, all feeling. Your tadpole burns in your brain.
silence. For the first time in a long time, your thoughts are entirely your own. And then, gravity. There was definitely a lot of things I could have done better, and a lot of things I could have, probably could have done worse. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I probably should not have been able to succeed on this run, as you saw how many times I was close to death. But like I said, you know, I could have done things better. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this Necromancer run, and I hope you guys learned some things or perhaps even saw some stuff you might not have seen before. Thank you so much again for watching, and it really means a lot to me. If you guys enjoyed this run, please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos from me. Other than that, feel free to watch the endings here, or perhaps seeing some scenes you haven't seen before, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks again so much for watching, farewell for now. Everything you did, everything you sacrificed, it was worth it for this. Victory. Our enemies are dust at our feet. We're free of that stupid parasite. And I'm free to enjoy all the power Cazador left me. You, Orpheus, abomination. You have served your purpose. Now you will die. Do what you must. I cannot live in this skin any longer. He sacrificed his soul to save your people, Lazel. Surrendered his very being to prevent the grand design. I'd say it's a tad ungrateful to murder him for it. Save your sympathy. He is a Sharlak, traitor and geich. You made a promise to me when we freed him, and I intend to hold you to it, as I hold myself bound to my queen. Though I may call you ally, I do not need your blessing to fulfill my duty. It is done. A fitting death for a traitor. To slay a geich was my sworn duty. To kill Orpheus was my privilege. My people are leaving, and I must leave with them. I must call out to Tunorath. My ascension's at hand. You are an honorable ally. I thought I would carry you, in truth. You oft carried me. I won't forget it. Silence now. I will speak the right. Vlakith Barnazin. Vlakith Ixaith. Vlakith Trinasaji. You quiver in spite of yourself. Lazel shouts to the astral plane, seeking an answer. And before long. She has one. A 
a red dragon to carry me to Tunarath. The Queen's covenant is fulfilled. You look on as Lazel soars to an uncertain fate. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city, smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. It's over, and it's all because of you. You who were destined to become a thrall. Thanks to you, there will be no illithid empire, no death god's tyranny. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. Thou art the dead three. Thy faces, gods. Thy actions, barely worthy of the name. Didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals. But souls vanish when their hosts become mind flayers. Didst think the other gods would not notice? Gods thou may be, yet thou hast proven thyself fools, everyone. The supplication of Bane, the whimper of Baal. The death mule of Merkel, felled by mortals. I overestimated thee. They did not. Vermin, away. Thou wilt trouble us no more. I owe you a debt of gratitude. 
You were the spark of ambition that rekindled Gale's ambitions after Mistra had so cleverly put them to rest. And you are the reason he survived the appetites of the tadpole for so long. I will admit I was angry when you failed to deliver the crown to me. Those who break a deal with this devil do not usually live to tell the tale. All is forgiven, though. The crown came to me as promised, and the method of delivery was spectacular. Gale harnessed its power, as Cassus once did, and he too fell into ruin. He was halfway to heaven when the orb detonated, tearing him apart. All that remained were ashes, blood, tears, and the crown. Always the crown. The decimation of Gale did not even leave a mark on it. Ambition, courage, hope. <laughs> they all burn you in the end. I will bend the crown to my will now and use its power to bring the nine hells under my command. When that is done, I will need new worlds to conquer. <laughs> it won't be long before I come knocking at your door. Ta-ta, for now. Unfortunately, with what I did to try to fix my camp stash, I technically destroyed my honor run, and I didn't get credit for the honor run. Even though it's still in honor mode, I didn't actually win the dice. So that probably means I will have to do another run. Um, this run I will be doing, actually I will be doing as, as a live stream and I'll be doing as a four player. I don't need to do another solo run. That was pretty tough sometimes. But we managed to succeed nonetheless. Thanks again for watching friends. Ta-ta for now.